Hi, this is Mr Evans. This video looks at buyer power within uh, Porter's Five Forces. So, um, yeah, working through to make sure that you've got a full understanding of each of these five forces. So, um, we looked at the threat of new entrants. Um, this is the power of buyers. Um, and what are we talking about the power of buyers here? We're talking about the ability of a business's customers to influence an organization. And this tends to be determined by the proportion of an organization's sales accounted for by individual customers. Okay, so I've got a picture down here of some DHL vans, DHL, huge delivery company. Now, this is called a fleet of vehicles. They're gonna, I don't, don't know what, uh, brand the vehicles are actually, but let's just assume for argument's sake that they're Ford. Now, if I'm a sole trader and I need a, a van from Ford for my business, great, Ford will want me to buy my van off them. However, they're gonna be far more worried about the contract that they have with DHL because DHL will buy literally thousands of vans every year. So who's gonna be paying uh, more for their vans, me as a sole trader who buys one van every five years, or DHL who are buying, you know, hundreds, possibly thousands of vans off Ford every year. Obviously, DHL, who account for a much higher proportion of their sales, are, um, uh, are going to have a lot more power, and that means that the uh, buyers will be able to negotiate discounts, etc. Now, <coughs> Ford you know, although DHL for Ford will be a big customer, they will provide other fleets of vehicles, they sell huge numbers of vehicles to individuals as well. Some companies really do only have uh, uh, one buyer. Common examples would be farmers who, um, or, or very few buyers, common examples would be farmers who, who sell to supermarkets. Um, I gave the example of um, a clothes manufacturer who's producing army uniforms sent it to the army. Um, and when you've only got one customer, obviously, if 100% of your sales are going to one customer, uh, you are hugely reliant on that business and they have an awful lot of power over you. So what's the impact on functional or strategic decisions? Well, the strategy needs to be, we want to reduce the power of individual buyers, individual customers, by increasing sales, so we're um, selling to a greater number of customers. We're spreading our risk, if you want. You know, even if we uh, do our job to the best of our ability and we satisfy our individual customers, what happens if they go broke? What happens if there's other, other circumstances? Okay, so we want to make sure that we're, we're spreading our risk by selling to the greatest number of customers possible, and that way each customer has less, less power over us. So what might we do? Well, in terms of marketing, obviously we want to uh, promote our brand, sell to as many customers as we can. We might have to, in terms of finance, find ways to satisfy uh, new customers, offering credit or favorable terms. In operations, maybe the ability to kind of mass customize goods, mass customization, so we can appeal to, to more consumers. Um, and uh, we're going to want to uh, invest in our sales team, uh, trying to improve their sales skills so they can go out and find those new customers. Um, well, the impact of profit, of course, it's fairly obvious. Um, fewer customers would tend to be equated with lower profits because that customer is likely to negotiate discounts and, um, uh, you know, favorable credit terms and and all the rest of it whereas if we've got more customers we're not as reliant on on one uh, customer we don't necessarily need to bow down to their every whim and uh, you know cut costs cut prices for them all the time therefore we should earn higher profits